So last time we touched base in session three, I believe it was, we had left off, we had just built a data layer and the start of a business layer for our application. We had created a add new customer API, we had written some unit tests, and we had some basic functionality in the actual application. So I have the project downloaded here. If you need to go grab it, grab it off the session three YouTube video. There's a link to the source code in the video description. And basically what we had is a basic CRUD form that allowed you to enter a first name, a last name, and an email address, and add that customer record as a new record to a database. So today we're gonna to expand on top of that. We're gonna modify the user interface to allow us to grab a list of customer records from the database. We're going to allow the ability to add, which we already have, but also delete and update customer records. So we're gonna add all the basic CRUD functionality into the application. Now to set some context before we dig into this, we're not going to, I'm not gonna write every unit test under the sun. I'm gonna write one major unit test that kind of demonstrates the overall functionality. And then at the end of the video, there will be again, a link to the source code with the full refactored, polished source code that you can look at and use as a reference for how you really should be approaching it in a production app. But I wanna get through this video in a decent amount of time. So let's go ahead and start off. So in the project itself, we primarily left off working in the Enterprise MVVM data library, and that's where we're gonna pick back up at. So under the unit test library for that project and under unit tests folder, we have a business contact tests class. And these were where we had the unit tests for the brand new API we had written for adding a new customer. So today we're gonna to start off by adding some additional APIs that we'll need in this case, we're gonna start off by doing two of them, the update customer API and then the get customer list API, which will be used to give us a list of customers in a list box in the, uh, the view. So to start off with, I'm just gonna drag a code snippet here. This is a unit test that I wrote for this, and it's gonna be a pretty big one. Like I said, these are gonna be high level. But essentially the unit test is we're gonna have a new API called update customer. And what we wanna validate is that when we call this API, the values on the entity are applied and changed in the database. And you can use more uh, explanatory verbiage in your unit test name if you want. So basically what we're doing is the same thing. We're gonna create a business context and we're gonna follow the unit testing pattern range act and assert. So our arrangement really is going to be, we're gonna create a new customer entity. We're gonna add that to the database using our existing add new customer API. So again, in this update customer API that we're about to build, we're going to build on top of our existing infrastructure. That's one of the benefits that TDD gives you. Then we're gonna set some data up to say, here's our original email, our original first name, original last name. Here's the new values that we're gonna to set to the database. We're gonna assign those to the entity and then ultimately we're gonna pass those to the update customer API. And then we're going to reload the original values from the database overriding what's in the entity object and memory. And then we're going to assert, are the new values from the database equal to the expected values that we told it to update? So fairly straightforward unit test. So now we're gonna actually build this API. So we're gonna to go to our business context class and we're just gonna go down here under add new customer. And again, I'm gonna paste in a code snippet. And the update customer API is pretty straightforward. We're no return value. We're gonna pass in the customer entity object. And we're actually going to go find that entity based on the customer ID being passed in. And if we have an instance of that entity, what we're going to do is apply the values of the object being passed in to the entity that was found from the database. So the customer object you're passing in is gonna be the, the values that you want to update to. And we're just using the primary key off of that object to go find the original values from the database. And then we're going to override those using an AD framework and then ultimately save changes to the database. This is a common pattern that you'll see in ASP.NET projects using web API. We're using a similar pattern here in our update customer API for this project. So with that said, we can go back to our business context test and I'm going to compile those two changes that we created and we're gonna open up the Visual Studio test runner. And we're gonna run that unit test to make sure that it passes. And before we do that, actually, 
we're going to go up here and go all the way up here to our class definition. And we're going to derive from functional test, which is a base class provided in the test library itself. And what this is going to do is set up and tear down a new database based on the connection string inside your app config file. So that way this gives us a clean test environment every time we run a test. And if you all look at the code and see what that does, in Visual Studio 2000, I believe 13, you can do Alt F12 to do get your uh, code peak window. And you can see that test initialize is basically uh, deleting an existing database if it already exists, or maybe you stop the unit test prematurely before the test cleanup can run, and it creates a fresh one, and then test cleanup just tears it back down. So then we're responsible for, in our unit test, populating any data into the database for our test case. So we're just gonna run all the unit tests real quick, make sure that the project still compiles correctly, all the unit tests are passing from where we picked up laps time. And in addition to that, we'll have our new test that we just added, update customer, and we can see that the unit test is passing. So again, I'm not gonna go through the normal steps of writing the unit test, making it fail, and then going through that. I want to get through the high level concepts of the project and you could do this on your own time. So now we have a basically an update API that we could use from our view models to hook into that functionality. So before we go that far, we're gonna add one more API on our business context. So we're gonna go back to business context tests. And we're gonna add another unit test and we're gonna create the API to grab a list of customers from the database that we would display in a list box. So I'm gonna grab that unit test here. And this one is, just as straightforward, basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a new context. We're going to populate it with three known existing records that we would expect to get back from this API. And we're going to add those to the database using our existing API. Then we're going to have a new API called get customer list. And we're going to call that and it should return a collection of customer entities. And then we're going to assert that those three entities that we're expecting back and you may want to assert more than just the order and primary key. You may want to assert you know, are, what values are included by the API, but for the sake of the demonstration, we're just going to validate the order and the primary key. But basically what we're saying is, do we get those three records back? Do they have the primary keys we're expecting them to be? And are they in the correct order? And then we're going to add a reference here. We need to add a reference to system.link. Now we need to build the API. So we have our reference to system at link, which we'll need here in a minute, but now we can build the API. So let's go to our business context class and we're gonna drag in another snippet here. And this function is very straightforward. We're not doing anything special with it, but essentially we're just grabbing a collection of customer records. We're gonna order them by the primary key in the business API, which is what our unit test is expecting. And we're going to return that as just an array, which derives from iCollection, or rather implements iCollection. So once we have that in there, now you can see that our unit test is will compile, and we're going to run this and make sure that, that passes as well. And it does. Okay, so now we've basically added some additional CRUD functionality to our business layer that we can now use in the application layer. So we're gonna start Moving towards that, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tweak our user interface before we start changing any code. We need it to facilitate providing us a list of customers from the database. We need to be able to select a customer. We need to be able to edit it, delete it, and update it. So we're going to add some new XAML here. In the view, we're going to go ahead and replace all the XAML with another snippet, and I'm going to show you kind of what we've done to the view so far. And you're not going to be able to see it in the designer quite yet, because there's some breaking changes that we're going to refactor out. So when I take this and recompile it, we can see that the markup is invalid. And I want you to notice a couple changes. One of them is we're going to rename the existing view model in the project. And if we go look at that from customer view model, we're going to refactor that and change it to main view model. Right now, the existing UI basically facilitated a single customer that you could add. It was basically just that you could enter some values and then add the customer to the database. Now we need to facilitate the list and all those pieces to it. So we're going to refactor that and rename it main view model. So that piece will change. You're also going to notice that we have a couple new resources. Um, one is I've just changed the label styling to 
align them correctly. And then secondly, we have this Boolean to visibility converter, which is provided by the .NET framework. And what that does, if you haven't used it already, is it converts a Boolean value, true or false, into a visible or not visible state. So you can hide or show elements in your UI based on that bit. And then we just changed the layout a little bit and I pre-named some commands inside the UI. So you'll notice some things have gotten moved around and you'll get to visually see it once we refactor some of this code out. But I want you to notice that we now have a add customer command. We have a get customer list command. And those are docked to the top of a list box, which will get our collection of customers. And you'll notice that now we have a new binding to selected item which is bound to selected customer, which will be a new piece of code that we add to our view model. Our data template stays the same. We're still binding to our customer entity, so that's no different there. We have a new binding for has customer on the stack panel that has all the fields to edit values. And that is what's going to actually use the visibility converter. So if we don't have a selected customer, basically, we don't want to show the controls that would allow you to save it, delete it, or edit the values. And you'll also notice that the values of those three fields that we had prior, first name, last name, and email, are now bound to selected customer dot first name, selected customer dot last name, and selected customer dot email, instead of the three properties that were previously directly on the VMODEL itself. And then lastly, we have two new hyperlinks, one for a save command and one for delete command. So those are the XAML changes. If you want, you can go ahead and uh, pause the video and you can download the source code in the description. And you can kind of get your project with speed with the template that I just put in there. And then once you're done with that, you can move forward. So with that said, we're gonna go over here to view models and we're gonna take this customer view model and I'm going to refactor this and I'm going to, I always use Resharper. I tell people all the time, you just have to, if you don't have Resharper, you just kind of have to live with it. Um, I really like it. But ultimately, we're going to refactor this to uh, be named main view model. And you will need to go throughout the project, that, again, if you don't have Resharper, and you will need to refactor all the references to from customer view model to point to main view model going forward. Okay, so now that we have that piece done, we're going to compile this, just make sure the refactoring succeeded. And now you can see that in the UI designer for our view, you can see the changes in what they actually look like. So again, we have a couple of hyperlinks to add a customer and grab the list of customers. And those will use our APIs. And then over here on the right side, we actually have kind of the form, which will allow us to edit values and then save the record and update it in the database using the API or ultimately we can delete the record from the database completely. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is you'll notice that on this refresh hyperlink, again, we have it bound to a command called get customer list command. We're gonna implement that real quick. Now, before we do that, I'm gonna show you, I already have a database that I've been using uh, for this example from the previous session and I have some junk data inside the database already. So if you don't have a database with pre-existing data in it, that's fine. We'll get to that here in a few minutes, just bear with me. But for now, we're gonna implement this command first before we move on to the rest. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go back to our unit test library. And the unit tests that we actually need to change are now gonna be in the desktop client tests library. And again, we have what used to be the customer view model tests. We're gonna refactor that to be main, main view model tests. And we'll just compile and make sure that the refactoring worked correctly. And some of these unit tests will actually go away completely once we're done making all of these changes because they won't be relevant anymore. So, but we're not going to worry about that for now. What we're going to worry about is adding the new unit test for grabbing the list of customers in the view model. So to do that, I'm going to again drag over a code snippet. And what we have here is a new uh, a new unit test called get customer list command populates customers observable collection and actually we'll name this populates customers property because we won't really know or care what type of property that is and the unit test goes like this again create a new context 
We're going to populate it with three known entities in the database. We're going to create a new instance of the view model, and we're going to provide a overloaded constructor in that view model that takes a business context as a parameter. And that will get us into a, into a later session down the road where we can talk about things like dependency injection. And then we're going to go ahead and act on our view model by calling get customer list command dot execute and it won't take any parameters and then our assertion will be is the customer's property populated with the three known records from the database so that's our unit test so now we're going to go to our main view model and we're going to implement that command so we're just going to kind of drag that over here and it's just going to be an i command property and we're going to utilize the action command class that we built in the previous session. And we're going to call into a private member function called get customer list. And we're going to go ahead and implement that. So let's go down here below add new customer. And then we'll plop that guy in. And this function is really simple. We're going to basically clear the existing collection of customers because this is a refresh of the list. We're going to enumerate through each customer returned by our API. And we're going to add that to the observable collection. Now for this code to work, we need to add the new constructor that will take the context as an overload. And then we're going to add a couple pieces of code to our existing constructor as well. So first we're going to add a read only field to store our context in. And in our original constructor, we're actually going to call into a new constructor that we're about to create. We're going to say uh, new business context. So that will be our convenience method. We're going to remove this line of code here into the new constructor that we need as a parameter. Or excuse me, not as a parameter. We're going to call business context as a parameter there and do our initialization here and then assign our read only field that way. So the default constructor will always just create a new context. This constructor will always take one as a dependency, but ultimately both of them will ensure that the customer collection property is always initialized to a new instance of an observable collection. So now that we have that code, we can take this and we can run it. So we're just going to click refresh on the user interface. And you can see that that's going to go out to the database and we returned the list of entities or database records that we were expecting. So we can just go pull SQL Management Studio up. We can run a, you know, here's the database we're looking at, MVVM session two, run the query, and there's our four records. And finally, we could go back to our unit test. And before we could run that and for it to be successful, we need to do one more thing, which is also derive the main view model test from functional test as well. And we're gonna borrow this for now straight from the enterprise data.test library. So we're gonna add a reference to the DLL. And we're just gonna derive right from that class. And we'll refactor that out into its own test base library in a later session. But what that's gonna do is make this unit test more valid to where it sets up a database, populates the data, and then tears it back down. So now that we have that, we can run the unit test to verify that the code that we just wrote indeed passes. And there we go. So now that we've implemented the ability to get the list of customers, now we can move forward and we can start working on the ability to edit an existing customer using our update command or update API. So we'll do all the work for that. This part actually becomes pretty easy. We're gonna go back to our main view model class. And these three fields, first name, last name, and email basically become deprecated. So we're gonna remove those in place of our selected customer property, which provides those three fields on the customer entity. Now with that, we'll also need to adjust the is valid field because it references those three. And we'll also need to do a bit of refactoring on our private implementation method, add customer. And we can change that safely without affecting without having to rewrite or write any new unit tests because we're just changing internal private implementation details. So we're gonna delete these three fields and replace those with a selected customer property. And we're gonna return a backing field called selected customer. And the reason that we're doing this instead of doing an auto property is we need to make sure that this implements or calls rather 
notify property changed for a charter change notification. And we're gonna also remove customer name so we no longer need that field. And we'll create our selected customer backing field and then we'll remove customer name. This is one of the old properties that we had on here. We'll remove that completely. And now for the is valid property, we'll refactor this a little bit more later on, but for now to get our project working, we need to change these three fields to selected customer, that first, last, and email. But also we need to do a check to make sure that we even have a customer. So what we're gonna say is the form is technically valid if we don't have a selected customer. Otherwise, the validity of it will be determined by whether it has value for first, last, or email. And just to, as a good practice, so people can understand the order of operations here, we basically have this condition here and then the combination of these potential conditions ultimately determine whether it's valid. And then down here under add customer command, we're gonna do a little bit of refactoring here and we can do this safely without having to write new unit tests or modify existing ones because this is a implementation detail at this point. We're gonna remove these three fields for add customer the parameter, we're going to go down to the API. We're going to remove those parameters completely. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify some default values for a new customer instead. And you can design this in your application how you want, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to make it very easy. So we're going to populate the database with a new record with these default values is basically what we're going to do. And then we'll add that to the database and then ultimately to the collection. So now let's compile the project. And we can see that we actually had missed something. And it is probably actually some of our old unit tests. And you notice that a lot of these validation unit tests are no longer valid anymore either because we removed all references to customer names. So these unit tests can go completely away. And all of these add customer command, cannot execute my first name is not valid. These can be refactored very easily by doing selected customer equals new customer. And then on that, we're gonna create those fields. And really you're gonna do the same thing for all the subsequent unit tests in this file. So we're gonna copy this portion here and in a later session, we'll come back and do some serious refactoring on the entire project because it's getting to the point where we're gonna have to do that before we can start to talk about other, adding other functionality to the application. But for now, we're gonna move forward doing this. And there's not that much of it. Okay, so now, we should get a compiled project and we can run this guy. And we'll refresh from the database. So we have our list. Now we can see that when we select an item, it updates the fields over to the right hand side. And we need to still kind of hook up our validation logic for our save command. And we'll do that here in a minute. And you can also see that now we can actually add a new customer to the database as well. So when I click this, you can see it's adding records. And then when I hit refresh, you can see that those records are still there. And we could open up SQL Management Studio and run a query against the database. And you can see that all the refactoring we just did had an immediate effect. So very straightforward changes. So we currently have the ability to add and get customers and we need to wire up the ability to update and delete. Now, updating the customer is also straightforward. Since we already built the API in the very first part of the video, really what we need to do is add a unit test to our view model for a save command. So we're gonna drag that over and we'll show you what that looks like. So here we have our expectation as save command, update selected customer first name. So again, I'm not gonna write every unit test, we'll just do the first name so you can get the concept. And the setup is very similar to previous tests where we're going to add a new customer in our database using the API we already have. We're going to create our view model. 
we're going to grab the list of customers, again, using pre-existing if instructors. So we're going to execute our get customer list command. We're going to pre-select the first customer in the list, which is the one we're going to update for this unit test. And we're going to do that by changing its value of its first name property, which is what the text box in the view would be bound to, from the number one to new value. And then we're going to execute the save command, which, does, which won't take any new parameters. And then our assertion is going to be similar, where we grab a customer record from the database. And in this case, it's going to be the only customer, which we know for a fact because we set the test up that way. We're going to forcefully reload the values from the context because the values are probably going to be cached since we're using the same context. And they're going to assert is the value of the selected customer on the view model equal to the value of the entity in the database after it's been updated and the value has been reloaded. So to do this, we need to implement our save command. So we're going to go to our main view model. And this is a fairly straightforward command to implement as well. So we're going to go down here below add customer command. We're going to create a new action command. We're going to call this save customer command. And this will be very similar, but we just return a new action command, except this is going to call it to save customer. And this is also going to, the can execute will essentially be, is the record valid? Because there's no sense in saving the customer if there's something about it that is invalid, such as an empty email address or empty name. Then we're going to create that API. And this is also very, very straightforward. We're going to go down here below, get customer list. And we're literally going to call into our update customer API and pass in the selected customer. Now, the reason this is all going to work with one another, add, get, and update, is because we're using a context that's stored per instance of the view model, which means that these entities are all tracked by the same context. So we grab a list of entities, they're in an unmodified state, and then when we update the values of the entities through the view, they will set the properties to a modified state, and then ultimately when we update it through the context, the new values will be applied and persisted to the database. So now that we have that, we can basically build our project. And we're missing one other piece. Save command, execute null. Oops, this actually should be just a name difference. Save customer command. We'll build. And we can run our unit test at this point, make sure that it does what we expect it to do. And we can see that it does. Now, the last thing that we need to do before we can actually validate this from the UI perspective is we did rename the command from save command to save customer command, just a difference in my code snippet. So we're going to go to the main window.xaml. We're going to select the hyperlink, and we're going to say save customer command. And we'll go ahead and rename this delete command while we're in here as well. And this will basically, it doesn't exist yet because we haven't built it. So we're going to recompile, and we'll run the application. We'll refresh our list and we'll take our first record and we'll just change the value of the first name, the last name, let's change it all to old and then we'll save it and then we can refresh the list or we can rerun the application and refresh and now you can see that we actually still have our new persistent values so that we're done with the update functionality. So the last piece of functionality that we need to add is the ability to delete. And deleting is actually very, very simple. And to start with, we're going to go again back to our unit test file. And underneath uh, save command, and we'll rename that to save customer command for consistency. And then we'll go down here and we'll add our um, delete command, or excuse me, delete test. Just want to delete a curly bracket there. And this one's going to be fairly straightforward as well. And very similar setup. So we're going to basically say, add a new customer in the database. Again, get our list of customers, select the first record, in this case, the only record, and then let's delete, uh, execute our delete customer command. And then our assertion is there should be no more records in the data context when we're done. So that's our command. Let's go into our main view model and actually implement that. So we'll go ahead and say public action command, delete 
customer command. Again, very similar syntax. Let's say delete customer. And in this case, we don't need to pass in a predicate to determine whether or not we can execute it. It doesn't matter whether the entity is valid or not. You can always delete an entity. So we're going to implement this function now. And this is going to be simple. We didn't implement a delete API. You'll notice that we have add new customer, update customer, and get customer list. I'm going to let you do that. So what I'm going to do for the time being is just say customers or context, since this is our business context that wraps our DB context. And I'm just going to remove it directly from NAD framework. And again, we can just pass in our selected customer. You could also set the uh, state of the entity itself to, uh, I believe it's removed or deleted, and then save it that way. We're just going to call it remove on the DB set, which is essentially what it does internally. And then we're going to save the changes. Like so. And once we're done with that, the last thing we need to do is remove that customer from the collection. And we'll move this private implementation function down here with REST. And then we'll go back to our test file and we'll run the test. And delete customer command execute. Let's see, compile. And this should be, there we go, just typo. Action, actually this should be I command. There we go. And we'll run our unit test, make sure that it does what we expect it to do. And it does. So now that we have everything wired up, we should be able to run the application and we'll refresh our list of customers. And we'll take these last three and we'll remove them. And then if we refresh, you can see that the same list and it's very quick. And to show you, we'll close and reopen the application. That those entities no longer exist. And there you have it. All right, so now that you have a full CRUD enabled form, make sure to download the source code in the video description. It'll be uh, drastically different from what you saw in this video. Again, there was unit tests we didn't write. Uh, it'll be refactored. There'll be things moved around slightly so we can be set up for the next session that we do. And again, as always, if you find these videos very useful, make sure to like and share the video. The more views I get, the more motivated I am to do future content. And again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.